Hello, students. In this session, we're going to discuss about uh, the meaning of mercantilism. Mercantilism is, a, uh, is an economic policy that is designed to maximize the exports and minimize the imports of a country. The mercantilism policy, which establishes how we can achieve the economic development through accumulation of more wealth, that especially the wealth in the sense that the accumulation of gold and silver. That is why the, 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 the economic policy is coined as mercantilism. The, econom the economy is basically based upon the uh, the precious metal accumulation of precious metal, along with that, the, the promotion of exports as well. It promotes imperialism, tariff and subsidies on traded goods to achieve that particular economic development. These policies aims to reduce the possible current account deficit to reach a current account surplus. So the, the, the important aim of the mercantilism policy is to create a favorable balance of payments to the, uh, uh, to the nation where the mercantilism economic policy was imposed. And mercantilism is also be called as commercialism because the, the mercantilism economic policy, which is mostly related to the, the trade between the countries, especially then the promotion of exports and getting the higher level of balance of payments and accumulation of more and more of uh, uh, foreign currencies and increasing the, the stock of foreign currencies so that they can able to accumulate more uh, uh, precious metals such as gold and silver. That is why the, the whole economic policy would also be called as the commercialism or commercialization. And in this system, uh, the country attempts to uh, mass wealth through a trade with other countries, exporting more than its imports and increasing the so stocks of gold and precious metal. The materialist mercantilism is an economic theory that was popularly uh, uh, in, uh, launched or it's very popular in European countries from the 16th to 18th centuries. Uh, even in the, in the, the end of uh, 15th century, uh, the mercantilism policy has started taking place in to the uh, European countries. The purpose was to increase a nation's wealth by maximizing this trade surpluses and collecting gold and silver. Because in mercantilism practice, if we take an example of the government is mainly focused on the promotion of exports. And uh, even certain commodities, they are not allowed to consume locally uh, and they will promote those kind of commodities for exports so that the economy will get higher level of income from uh, foreign countries. So in such uh, case, the, the major objective is to maximize the trade surpluses so that the country will get the higher level of uh, income from foreign reserves. This particular mercantilism policy, which involves the restrictions of imports. Yes, of course, uh, they don't want the, the, the nation or the government who is following the mercantilism, they won't uh, uh, allow to do more exports so that they will use uh, the tool of controlling tool of uh, tariff barriers. They'll put more tariff on imports of commodities. Then they'll put quotas. There is a kind of tariff which taxes which is imposed on import goods and non-tariff barriers apart from taxes they will they will have the restriction of import of certain commodities they will have a, a restrictions on uh, uh, import of 
uh, end product rather than they will uh, try to um, uh, import uh, raw material so that the production can be possible at the local uh, uh, destination itself so in this way the mercantilism have uh, having the practice of uh, restriction on imports and accumulation of foreign currency reserves plus gold and silver reserves so they always the, the mercantilism policy always involves in accumulation of more uh, currency reserves from foreign countries uh, through exports and they will also uh, uh, um, accumulate gold and silver in their government uh, treasuries so they want they what they believed is the more the wealth of the nation will become the higher the economic development so that they have started accumulating more values of this uh, high value precious metals and granting of state monopolies to uh, a particular firms especially those associated with the trade and shipping so the the government has decided to a mercantilism policy is decided to give the permission for the monopolies firms rather than the government they decided to give those who are involving in production and export of commodities so that uh, they will get monopoly power to produce uh, uh, the higher amount of commodities for export and subsidies of export industries to give a competitive advantage in global markets the mercantilism policy is always supposed to uh, uh, support the export industry so that they desire, they have given uh, uh, enormous amount of subsidies for the promotion of exports with the global markets and government investment in research and development to maximize the efficiency of the capital of the domestic industry to promote the domestic industries the mercantilism policy through the mercantilism mercantilism policy the government has provided uh, many avenues for investment opportunities for research and development of the particular in exporting industries and allowing copyright and intellectual theft from foreign companies uh, the mercantilism policy is allowing the copyrights and intellectual theft from foreign companies because certain commodities we could uh, the 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 domestic countries could not able to produce certain certain commodities we need we have to depend upon the foreign companies so that the foreign company product can also be produced in locally those commodities can also be uh, the 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 their uh, intellectual ideas can be taken and followed in the local countries to produce the same commodity so the mercantilism which involves in allowing this kind of intellectual theft from foreign countries and it is also limiting the wages and consumption of the working classes to enable the greater profits to stay with merchant classes and it is also control of colonies example making colonies buy from empire country and taking control of colonial wealth and apart from the uh, uh, mercantilism ideas we have also we can also uh, have a, a certain ideas about the modern mercantilism which is also closely associated with the mercantilism policy in this modern world mercantilism is sometimes associated with the present policies what we have example uh, the undervaluation of currencies the government buying of foreign currency assets to keep the exchange rate undervalued and make exports more competitive such kind of uh, uh, issues or a criticism is often uh, uh, leveled at uh, uh, china because they will also they will always have this kind of undervaluation of currencies uh, to promote and accumulate more foreign currencies and government subsidy of an industry for unfair advantage the government is providing subsidy for uh, export and not for the importing industries so the importing industries those who are importing raw materials from foreign currencies and producing here 
they will be suffered because they'll have an unfair advantage. And a surge of protectionism is in, it's a, it is a, a thumb rule for the mercantilists because they, they want to protect the import. If you take an example of US tariff on Chinese imports, the recent example, and US also have a, a, a very a high amount of tariff for US products. So that will become a, a trade war between the two countries. And we have also discussed in the previous slide that copyright theft also be possible or the mercantilism is also following the uh, theft of the copyright from the foreign companies to produce the commodity. There are certain, certain criticism uh, uh, is there for the mercantilism economic policy because uh, every, every policy, every uh, uh, theory has its own, it has its own limitations. So based on the limitations only the next level of theory has been taking place and based on the criticism only a new, uh, the invention of theories has came into existence. And uh, the first criticism has coined by uh, Adam Smith the wealth, in the Wealth of Nation 1976. He argued for the benefits of free trade and criticized the inefficiency of monopoly. He argued that he is saying that the free trade policy has to be there because the mercantilism policy is only encouraging the uh, outward of goods and inward of foreign currencies, but they are not allowing uh, uh, the, the, uh, the this, uh, our nation or the country to import commodities because it becomes a one-way traffic. So uh, the country, the policy, which it which aims to only to sell commodities to outside the nation, but other nation also would like to sell their products at the other nation. So the other nations will be suffered because they could not able to import to this uh, mercantilism policy uh, uh, implemented countries. So that has become an, one of the uh, 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 one one of the uh, concept which is against the free trade policy. Because free trade policy, in the sense, we need to have a, a mutual understanding between the mutual uh, 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 transaction of goods and services between the two countries. But here the policy, the mercantilism policy, which only promote exports, not imports. And the second one is the theory of comparative advantage. We could not able to see the theory of comparative advantage in the mercantilism policy. Uh, in, the, in the forthcoming classes, we are going to discuss elaborately what is the theory of comparative advantage. Because the whenever we are having the trade between one country to another country, that both the countries comparatively, they should get advantages out of that particular trade. But whereas in this process of mercantilism, two countries will involve in transaction, but only one country will get the benefit out of the trade. So that will become one of the criticism uh, against the mercantilism policy. And like that, uh, mercantilism is a philosophy of a zero sum game. That zero sum game also also is one of the biggest theory. That is also we are going to discuss in the forthcoming classes. And uh, uh, that zero sum game is nothing but I'll just give you a brief idea. A two, uh, if you take an example of market, one person will sell the commodity, the another person will buy the commodity. Those who are selling, they will get the profit out of that selling the commodity. Those who are buying they will get certain amount of satisfaction from buying the particular commodity by spending certain amount of money on that. So here both will get some amount of satisfaction either by money income or get consuming the commodity. That is called as win-win game. Or sometimes uh, the seller will reduce some two rupees and buyer will get two rupees less than that because of redu uh, reduction of the two rupees, the seller will get higher amount of sales and buyers will get a higher level of satisfaction because with the same amount of money, they are consuming extra units of commodities. That is also a kind of win-win game. Whereas the zero-sum game, if we take an example of 
uh, uh, the online trading of shares. If someone is buying a commodity, someone has to sell that particular shares. While one person, either seller or buyer, when they are earning a profit, that is not that that is only a profit for the, that particular person while, while they are selling the uh, shares. But it is has been bought from somebody else. They won't get any profit. So only one side of either buyer or seller, when they're getting profit, it is called a zero sum game. In mercantilism policy, that zero sum game is involved. Only the mercantilism policy country, mercantilist countries will get profit by trade, but the other countries who is engaged in trading, they will not get profit. So that will become a zero sum game. An elaborate version of zero sum game will or will also have a, 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 in the next session, forthcoming session. Then the another criticism is the mercantilism, which stresses the government regulation of monopoly and mercantilism justified empire building. Mercantilism leads to tit for tat policy, high tariff and imports. And the economies of scale from specialization possible under free trade. So these are all the criticism of mercantilism policy. Thank you, students. We'll discuss the next session in the next video. All the best.